Hi everyone. Welcome to the fourth episode of Audiology SLP Talk with Sunil and Shruti. We have got very good feedback about our last episode. Thank you all. Keep supporting us like this by subscribing the channel, hitting the like button and posting your comments down to the video as well as by sharing this video with all your friends and colleagues. For today's episode, we have come up with the following contents. Stroboscopy demonstration by Dr. Vikas Agrawal. Google Hello Smart Hearing Aids. Brain computer interface technology for completely locked in state people. And advice for families with loved one with severe brain injury. Assessment of voice include subjective as well as objective measurements. Stroboscopy is one of the objective measurement which is widely used for assessment of voice disorders by speech language pathologists and ENT surgeons. We have here Dr. Vikas Agrawal, ENT surgeon from Mumbai, demonstrating the instrumentation and clinical procedure. Hi, welcome to the YouTube channel of Audiology and SLP Talk by Sunil and Shruti. Let me first congratulate Sunil and Shruti for the wonderful initiative they have taken to educate their fellow colleagues in audiology and SLP field. So voice is a very, very common problem that people face and they are increasingly coming to ENTs and audiologists and speech language pathologists and increasingly SLPs are required to treat voice disorders. So what you should know about voice and what are the latest equipments that are necessary for you to understand the voice problems we'll discuss today. You all are aware of laryngoscopy, the standard laryngoscope in which you put it inside the throat of a patient and see the vocal folds coming together. Is that enough to decide what problem the patient is having? No, that's not enough and therefore stroboscopy is the need of the hour in which you decrease the number of vibrations of the vocal fold many a time so that it is appreciable to human eyes. So a video laryngoscopy stroboscopy system is essential to diagnose the finer nuances of voice problems. Let's start with the equipment. What is the equipment required? What is stroboscopy? Stroboscopy is a standard laryngoscopy in which the only difference is the difference in the light source. As you can see here, this light source right now is, you can hear the sound, it's a flickering light which is controlled by the frequency that, see if I am saying this, the frequency of my sound, uh, 1010. Uh, So the frequency of vibration of this light source is controlled by the frequency of the sound that the person is producing. That means if I am saying, uh, if I am vibrating 110 times per second, the frequency of this light source will also go 110. So that each peak and trough is coincided by one blow of light. And therefore, when I go into high pitch 300 times, it will take it to 300 times. Therefore, you can see the movement in a slow motion because it desynchronizes by 2 to 3 hertz. So let us see how we will, how we will do this study and how we will uh, analyze it. Okay, so I am performing a stroboscopy on Shavan. So I will ask Shavan to open his mouth and I will spray a local anesthetic which is a 10% xylocaine. So on Mukolo. Ah. Ah. We will go inside ah. and spray the posterior pharyngeal wall so that when I am checking inside, he does not cough. So some patients have a lot of gag reflex and that makes the life difficult. Hopefully he does not have a bad gag. Now to prevent fogging of the scope, we dip it into savlon which is put on a cotton piece and then we pull the tongue out, say ah, ask the patient to say e. 
Now E will not come out, but will ask the patient to say E. And then uh, gently go inside. Ask the patient to say E, and then go inside straight. This is a 90 degree scope, so we you can see the epiglottis there. You go behind the epiglottis, say E, E, and you can see the. Relax. Just try to relax. E. And you can see the mucosal waves very fine. There is no problem with this patient. And the strobe recording is over. Now the other option is to use a flexible laryngoscope. A flexible laryngoscope helps you to evaluate the vocal cords while singing or while making sound. Right, so you have to put the drops, the local anesthetic drops into the nose of the patient which will go into the throat so that the nose is anesthetized and as you go inside the patient does not sneeze. Now this is a Carl Storrs distal chip flexible laryngoscope as you can see here and I am going inside the nose of the patient like this. As you see onto the screen I am passing through the nose, this is the nasopharynx, I go below. I ask Shravan to take deep breaths and say E. Now as you can see here, it's much easier for him to say E. And you can see in different pitches he right. Or uncha E. And say how it behaves during speech. Tumari age kitni is shaman? Twenty eight. So you saw how the larynx moves up and down during different pitches uh, production. And this is how a flexible laryngoscope with a visibility like this, this is a distal chip scope, can give you excellent view of the vocal cords while phonation. Say, ek or fit say, bolo, dhire se. And the other advantage, lambi saans to. You can go very, very close to the vocal cords. You can see very, very nicely. You can see the under surface of the cord. This is the true cord. This is the false cord. You can see the ventricle and under surface of the true cord. Every small detail you can see with this scope without troubling the patient at all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Vikas Agrawal. We are thankful to you for being a part of Audiology Secret Talk since the beginning. Thank you once again for your contributions and your constant support. Moving on to the clinical tip session of this episode, we have very simple but very important clinical tip which we can utilize in counseling the family members of persons with aphasia. It is important for friends and family to continue to treat the person with aphasia post-stroke as an intelligent adult. These counseling points will make family members aware that the ability to communication has changed post-stroke but not their identity. They are still what they are with interest, skills and a past. Medical News Times has interviewed two people, Peter and Gio, who have recovered from aphasia to understand their viewpoints regarding what are their experience during their struggle period to recover. Let us see some do's and don'ts specified by Gio and Peter for better recovery. Do's and don'ts while speaking to individuals with aphasia. Look directly at the person 
when you are speaking to them speak slowly and clearly but use normal tone of voice use short sentence and stick to one topic at a time ensure that there is no background noise reassure the person that you understand their frustration write things down it will help find out the person's employment interest and passion now and before the stroke and try to relate them do give people chance to say what they want to say without jumping in or correcting them now some don'ts don't finish the person sentence for them don't speak too fast don't assume that because the person is having difficulty in understanding they must be stupid Don't talk down to the person or speak to them as if they are a child. Don't speak to person while they are driving for example because they cannot concentrate. Most of the people with aphasia will expect their family and friends to follow these do's and don'ts just like how geof and peter expected it during their recovery period it will help in recovering the communication skills better as well as in maintaining their emotional stability post stroke so let's all work together in giving a better life for person with aphasia by counseling the do's and don'ts to the family members and friends let us make the life of person with aphasia and their recovery period better Today we will have an overview of an interesting article titled Brain Computer Interface Based Communication in the Completely Locked in State published in PLOS Biology in January 2017 by this following authors They have taken four patients with advanced amyotrophic lateral sclerosis who are in completely locked in state that is They are in a state of complete motor paralysis but have an intact cognitive and emotional processing. They have used FNIRS that is functional infrared spectrography and an implicit attentional processing procedure for BCI communication. FNIRS technology involves analysis of frontocentral oxygenation changes to process the thoughts for yes and no answers for open questions as well as for personal questions. Online FNIRS classification of questions are done using linear support vector machine that is SVM and EEG. The results shows that an above chance level correct responses rate over 70 percentage was obtained using svm however eeg did not exceed the chance level threshold for correct communication if the study can be replicated these positive results could indicate the first step towards the abolition of complete locked in state at least for als For more details of this article you can access the link given in the description box. Google has published online article on their Hello Smart earphones in Hearing Journal in December 2016. So let us see what is so interesting about new Hello Smart earphones. 
it's more natural ready to go man machine interface it records biological signal and stimulates nervous system they are designed to sense and analyze multimodal signal from environment they can even monitor vital signal attention or even mood it seamlessly connects to phone and internet it delivers real and virtual stimuli it can meet your personal needs by compensating or enhancing sensory and cognitive function to treat diseases there are many researches going on in this field like visually guided hearing aids and other attempts to place electrodes on the ear canal to measure vital functions etc google smart earphones will soon be available not only to the hearing healthcare industry but also to the wider wearable technology market upcoming year will mark the era for smart earphones for those who wants to contribute towards our video can contact us through our email id that is audiologyslptalk@gmail.com the references for the current episode is given in the description box below if you have missed our previous episodes you can watch them by accessing the links given in the description box or else you can type audiology slp talk episode 1 2 and 3 in the youtube directly you can also follow us on facebook twitter linkedin and instagram links are given below the video so it's time to wrap up our episode we hope that episode 4 was clinically useful to you all please subscribe our channel if you are not subscribed yet like our video if you appreciate our work to provide your valuable input you can write them in the comment section below our video many of our friends and colleagues give us feedback on facebook and whatsapp we request them all to give the same comments on our video on the youtube as well thank you once again for watching our video see you in the next episode till then bye